Welcome back to the Mason Cox Show. Now, we have got so much to cover on this catch up. Uh, but first of all, to start the podcast, like always, we got Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. We're going to add two on here Apple and Spotify. Follow us, subscribe is the big thing. So you get, get the ribs. little. You get the little notification at the top of your phone to let you know we got a new one out. So a lot of things to cover. We'll start off. Uh, we've got a few different things from Cam Smith winning the British Open, which was about a week ago. We've got um, some crazy stuff in the fake IPL league running in India, which is a, <laughs> I'm really excited for that one. Um, we've got different things from what I'm excited about, the James Webb Telescope, Brayden. <laughs> and um, of course, we got the update on your dating life, which uh, we'll definitely get into. Oh, sorry. The last thing, the footy on the weekend winning after the siren. Maybe that's something we might cover. Hey, yes. Deflect. Yes. Don't yes. deflect. Braden's very excited about this podcast. So we, get, and we will get to the footy. We're not Don't jumping in. We're not jumping top. straight into it. Not straight into it, Braden. But what a teaser. it is going to be a big <laughs> chunk of this podcast. I know everyone's looking forward to it. But without further ado, we'll get into the first thing Splendor on the Grass. Oh. Massive for the entertainment industry at the moment. A lot of cool acts rolling around Australia, I'm telling you. We've got Ty Verdez, who I've hung out with. We've got Jack Harlow. We've got plenty of other people. But the first day of Splendor, insane. Weather-wise, could not have asked for a worse situation. It was Fire Festival 2.0, I'm telling you. There was no splendor about it. it <laughs> there was, was nothing <laughs> splendid about this experience. It's just mud soup. I, um, I'm a country boy. I love a bit of camping. Oh, but... Shout out to the chooks. Yeah, I'm not about that life. It's just gumboots and pajamas and mm. cold. And like even the Instagrammers out there can't fake enjoyment. <laughs> They're just like, this is shit. This and is... all the acts got canceled on the first day. Yeah. I don't know. It's there's a deep dark part inside of me that's just like yes. Oh, he doesn't like <laughs> just a festival. Scrolling through the just through oh, the socials. No. Well, I'm here. I got to work. Yeah, okay. I yeah, have yeah. job. I have responsibility. I got to yeah. do all that. No, eighteen year old with nothing to do. Yeah. So yeah. Well, have fun out in your mush paddock. <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome though because it was probably the biggest musical event that happens in Australia every year. Yeah. You have to admit that. And there's some no, great cool. acts that do come around from across the world that come in town for this. It comes from a place of jealousy. Don't Yes, hundred percent. I, I want to go to Splendor at some point in my life. Yeah. I need to experience that. That in Tamworth which you probably don't know, a country music festival of Australia. Oh, 100%. Tony, no, no. I'm from Echuca. Denny Ute Master is just <laughs> up the road. Yes. Oh, man, if you went to the Denny Ute Master wearing your full cowboy kit. Oh, woo. oh the alter ego of Cletus would get oh. out and about around town. There's Lock no doubt about your daughters. that. Mason <laughs> Cox is in town. Get the Ute with the mud flaps going. Oh, gosh. It'll be good. But yeah, wait, you, you, we glossed over something because did you see where that went? Um, you were just dropping names all over the yeah, place. Yeah, here, there, and everywhere. Ty Vedez? Yes. You're at the MCG. One with of my favorite artists. Just chilling. Why, just show him. Show him the workplace, you know? Show him the office. Why? How does he know you? Um, kind of random. So one of my friends works at Sony and huge Ty Vedez fan. And she was like, hey, do you want to meet him? Went to the concert, had a little box thing up there and got to, to meet him after. And he was like, <laughs> they organized this whole thing to go to the MCG. But I think it's because I am the quintessential, like, American ambassador of the AFL, you know, there's no other American in You're the, the league. US correspondent. So it's a US correspondent. <laughs> that's a great way to put it right. <laughs> the US correspondent for the AFL. So anything, anyone that comes in from the US, I feel like they're always like, oh, Mason, you can teach him what AFL is, you know, this great game of Australia. And so my phone, I got to get a new phone or maybe my plan lapsed. I didn't, I didn't get a phone call to go to the super box to watch the Ty Vedez. Concert I don't. I don't really want to tell you where it was actually <laughs> hosted at. It was at Billboards in the city, which uh, I've heard some rumors about. Brayden, and maybe that you, if, yeah, maybe you at eighteen probably uh, did some work there at Billboards. I'm not really too sure. I but went once. I went to Billboards once, and that was. I've uh, been there once too, and that's it. That was <laughs> Tyler, that's his concert. We did uh, Jack Harlow's. Yes, hanging around. He's, he was, uh, and he's picking up the footy. I'm telling you, he's loving the bit of footy. Yeah. So what? He had the umpire wearing the. The coat, the overcoat, yep, the, the white old coat. white coat and white hat. I still think that should come back for retro round. Huge fan yeah, of that. That's it. a good point. And then, um, what? He was wearing a Frio bucket hat. Yeah, not stage. too happy about that. He he did his first thing in Perth, so I think they got to him early. Yeah. And, um, I'm always a fan of the bucket. I'm a big bucket. Are you? Big bucket fan. Do you get the bucket hat with the corks that come down to no. swat the flies out? That, you probably would wore that in the Chuka, surely you growing ever up. seen one of those? Yeah, I used to. I get warm. I was like, went to these school, like, Oz clinics in the middle of nowhere, like, Victoria. Every kid's wearing them. I was like, I gotta get one of these things the for worst, myself. The worst part is they work. Like, they actually work, but... It's actually how I got blinded. Yeah, <laughs> straight cork to the eye. <laughs> <laughs> now I wear goggles. <laughs> but it was, there was the story of, so Jack Harlow's not a drinker. 
Yes. But um try to get peer pressured into doing a shoey, which is the most Australian thing ever. Yeah, do a bloody shoey. <laughs> no. He gets okay. There was a scene. He's like performing and someone like pours a shoey and tells him he needs to do a shooty out of a gum boot, which like we mentioned, Splenda's not in the most sanitary place at this point in that's time. A good drinking vessel. He does it is oh dude, that is that's a keg. That's almost like a you had to put a keg oh, yeah. into a, a shoey to do a shoey out of that. But yeah, he doesn't drink. So He's thousands changed, and man. thousands of people were egging him on to do the shoey, and he just denied Australia of what it is. The easiest way to become Australian citizen, I feel like, is to be able to do a shoey like Daniel Ricardo and just nail it out of your shoe in the most disgusting way possible is like how you get Australians to love you. Yeah, I'm trying to think of like an alcohol-free shoey that... You probably don't want one. <laughs> don't think it's you do. the alcohol that gets you through it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah that was uh, Jack Harlow's in town. He's um, traveling around. He's at the forum, I think, on Friday. So uh, if you want to buy tickets, check it out. I would love oh. to go see him. I saw him at ACL, actually, which is Austin City Limits in the US. You getting a bit of this and, for that, um, <laughs> that promo? Oh, I'm not, actually. I just really like him. I think he's a cool dude. He's just like unique. He's a different look. He just kind of is himself, quintessentially does not care what anyone else thinks about him. And uh, yeah, I saw him at ACL. Really good act. So. Check it out. I don't, I'm not. This, I'm not actually getting any promo for this. I actually probably should, and I should probably get a free ticket. But um, yeah, check them out. Friday forum. I I'll think. Be th- I think uh, there's questionable details, but <laughs> I'll be there with my bucket hat on. Yes, your free bucket hat. But into the next thing, we've got a lot of sport off the top. So we've got next is Cam Smith winning the British Open, getting the Claret Jug, smashing a couple of beers out of that. I am a massive Cam Smith fan. I don't know if you know much about golf, Braden, but like. Cam Smith is changing the game. His, I think uh, what I respect most out of him is like in a game that's so uh, kind of not necessarily pretentious, I would say, but like is for the upper class, just like yeah. tennis. He wears a mullet and just rolls around, just dominates the place, just like does not care. Yeah, no, I I think it's, I don't know, is it our thing? Is the mullet like... It's, it's Australian. It's, it's Australian. truly Australian. Yeah, so we got... Our things aren't exactly like upper class. We got the shoey, drinking out of shoes with like a mullet. It's and, not a good resume. <laughs> yeah, no, we don't. Uh, but it's good to see an Australian on the on one of the biggest stages doing great things. I know I suck at golf. Like, oh, I'm terrible. But I'm trying. I'm trying my best. I feel like you have to get into it. That's oh, the a, peer pressure. It's, it's got to like, be a weekly thing. Everyone's like, is right into golf now. When I was a, like, when I was a kid, I hadn't. I had no desire to play golf. Now it's, I don't know. Is it? You get older and it's like a, I feel like everyone, and most people out there might be listening and go, yeah, I feel like this might be it. But you go because one, your mates are going and two, because it's like an easy way to get out of business and probably claim it on tax. I feel like it's like, oh yeah, I had a business meeting. Oh, where'd you go? Uh, Burnley Golf Course. It's really just, yeah. (laughs) Just played a quick night. Walking around, having a chat and then shanking a few balls. Someone once told me um, golf was created because men refused to just go on a walk and have a chat. Yeah. Like women will just go and just like call someone up, be like, hey, let's just go for a walk down the street, you know, Karen of Brighton. And then men won't do that. So what do they do? They go play golf, which is essentially the same thing, but just hitting a ball in one direction for like a whole day. Yeah. And uh, well, it's a good way to take out your frustration. Oh, dude. Once you get like you launch on one as a driver, there's no better feeling in the world. But I say, I say that, but it's probably just as equally frustrating. Yeah, but you just need one good hit to bring you back. Yeah. That's the thing. Moving on to the next one. So we've got the fake IPL league in India. I love this story. This story is wild. Like we talked about it with narrowly on the last podcast a little bit. And we we ended up going across it and just briefly brushing over it. But the fact that there was a fake league made in like farmer town of India that Russians were making <laughs> bets on that was totally rigged, totally rigged by the uh by the Indians. And they ended up making this like thing on the internet and just absolutely screwed a bunch of Russians out of a bunch of money, I'm sure. But like literally, and you look at it and it's, um, I think they both have like their different jerseys that are like yeah. IPL jerseys, but you, everything seems somewhat like legit. And then you look at the ground, the ground looks nowhere near yeah. legit. Like you can tell it's in like the middle of a field. It's kind of like when you tell the story, it paints this like picture, but when you see the vision, it's like this sketchy as shaky vision. I'm impressed they got like graphics and stuff. And they actually hired a like proper commentator to commentate oh, really? the game. So like they went pretty hard on it. And then, yeah, so they're wearing like actual IPL kits. And mm. yeah, so they gave the umpire a walkie talkie. So, oh, is that how they cheated? So they can dictate to him what they want the batters and bowlers to do. So yeah, like, and then oh, the bowlers got sandpaper. Yeah. And then <laughs> is that no? Okay. No, still, still not over that. No, okay, just no. checking. Ah, oh, geez, I'm gonna cop so much shit on this. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's an Australian citizen. Can I make that joke? Uh, 
Yeah, you probably, no, yeah, maybe another five years. Yeah, yeah. Five years. Well, you should be, be equally as ashamed as we are now. It should uh, happen before citizenship, so <laughs> yeah, therefore right. I wasn't part of it. Um, we are the last one of uh, a bit of sport. Now, State of Origin was recent. Last, it was probably two weeks ago now. Um, and I just, I just love this because State of Origin, like AFL, doesn't really do this anymore. But like in rugby, people go freaking nuts for this thing. Like it is a proper like supporter base, and whenever it goes around this and. Um, crazy obviously like scenarios like very close game then like someone smothers it and goes and takes it to the house for a touchdown or whatever it's called um no i'm kidding it's called try i've getting my head wrapped around this but you were texting me through this game and we're not really gonna talk about the game because i just want to talk about this text i got from you just giving me absolute shit for my living room yeah because you put up you're a bandwagon supporter of every sport there's out there but like cricket <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we're getting there but yeah so you put up this post saying that what you're a maroon yeah huge maroon guy big maroon guy <laughs> it's maroon it's maroon but um yeah and you lounge room i don't know how to not be offensive it just looked like shit <laughs> it's real basics so saying that i put out a tweet about how you need to get down to ikea and grab yourself a mm. new tv cabinet which your mum liked that tweet yeah i know my mom's trolling me on twitter nowadays which is highly <laughs> offensive i'm very happy it's good but um yeah and then i I kind of had some time to reflect on it as I sat in my lounge room, which is not- Which is not <laughs> up to standards either. Like, we both live in bachelor pads, like, very much so. Yeah. Like, I found, like, most of my furniture, I think, on one of those, like, you know, the area of Ikea, you, like, go at the very end, you take a left, and there's, like, the <laughs> on-sale clearance because someone's returned it. Like, that is where my living room exists. Uh, like, everything from there has moved into my living room. And then the one thing that I do have that is quite embarrassing is- what holds my TV up is actually like a, it's like a piece of furniture. It's, not, it's seriously nothing. And I think I found that at the bottom of my apartment complex, you know, someone just like moves and they just put a bunch of stuff in there. That yeah, cabinet. Snagged one of those. Yep. Snagged one of those. And um, that is how frugal I am. Your, your cabinet is rubbish. <laughs> Essentially. Yes. It's repurposed as yeah. well as you know, I'm earth friendly, you know, oh, I know Great that. Piece. I know that exact Ikea section because that's where i got my tv cabinet yes from. <laughs> it's the greatest thing ever and i'm actually a bit nervous putting it on the podcast because now there's gonna be nothing there to pick from yeah don't give away all the secrets yeah, the, yeah. my tv cabinet it had the sticker with the bit of paper that says what's wrong with it on it and it it, do, it doesn't have any front doors which oh, uh, is fine yeah why do you need front doors i want to get into my stuff but yeah so to paint a picture for everyone out there my lounge room <laughs> It's, oh, we need to take a photo and put it on social. It is atrocious. Oh, it's a real car it's, crash. I live the with TV is what gets me. Yeah. Well, the TV. Uh, every Please guy it, describe what your like lounge room looks like. So every guy knows you. You got to spend the most money on the TV. It's yep. the most important. So in, in the game, console. I have this big, yes, yeah, seventy-five inch, eighty inch, like it's as big as the wall. Big TV. I have two couches. One's brown leather. One's blue leather. Gosh, this reminds me of college. So and much. they. They go the full width of the lounge room. So it goes wall, couch, couch, wall. No side table, no no desk lamps. All touching. No nothing. It's all touching. And then the we have two coffee tables. One's glass with a silver trim and one's fake wood with like a, a black metal trim. <laughs> nowhere near it. Just nowhere near it. Oh. It's like, I think... Until you kind of like settle into a house, maybe you buy a house and you start buying nice furniture. Well, but I feel exactly. like there's probably a lot of people out here listening, walking through the like lounge room going, ah, shit, that's me too. <laughs> so that's like, what, oh, no. I think there's, that's exactly the, the difference in us. I have two other housemates. I haven't moved out. I haven't done the whole thing. You live by yourself in your own thing that yeah. you should be styling up and making your own. I don't own my place. I'm still yeah. renting. Out of the two of us, there's two bad lounge rooms. Our followers are what? We got 80% guys as our followers. There's got to be some bad, to, yeah, oh my gosh, bad yes. lounge rooms out there. Back us up. Can you please send some through? We're, please DM us. We can't the be worst, the only ones. So, the worst looking living rooms yeah. you can possibly imagine. Send us you, your bad living rooms and tag us in and we'll we'll share them on our on our socials. <laughs> there's got to be, be some, some bad some ones. Really good ones. I'm not going to lie. I don't know if there's worse than mine. It's pretty There bad. would be worse than yours. We had a hole in our living room in college, like in the <laughs> in the middle of the living room, dude. Like there was no, it was just carpeted over. Like there yeah. was a hole. So then we put the couch over the hole to cover the hole so no one would know there's a hole in our living uh, room. I'm pretty open, but I actually, I don't know if I can post a photo of my lounge room. Now we're going to force you into it. It's uh, so embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> moving on. There, I want to talk about this. There's a guy actually, this might be the, the weirdest, most Australian story. So this guy, apparently at the SCG, Sydney Critic Ground, he goes up and finds like a back door to like climb up onto a roof. 
and then from the roof like watches the game and then he went down south and he ended up urinating is where he went wrong and then I think everyone like <laughs> caught on and was like oh no we need to probably arrest this fella but if it wasn't for the urination That's bit it. I reckon he would have gone away has been like the absolute idol for the week yeah he would have been like this Australian icon along oh with God. um waiting for a mate guy and oh, yeah. just waiting on a mate <laughs> it's the greatest video but it's like ever he climbs up on the roof he has the best seat in the house to watch the game he just if he didn't pee off the edge. <laughs> it just would have been okay. He's just so close. That'd be sick to be at the SCG and then like somehow find that back door to get up onto that roof just to chill and watch a game where like no one else is around you. You've got this like aerial view into the actual stadium. The confidence of the guy too. Oh, dude. Oh, the audacity You're of whipping the it out like, in front of just, a lot of people. And there's, everyone's like watching. Like it wasn't <laughs> like you were kind of like hidden somewhere. Like, cold you're night. <laughs> like, cold cold night. night. Sydney. Uh, moving on from things that are telescopically far away from other things uh, the James go. Webb telescope see <laughs> do you like that intro that that's, was really good that's a segue right? um, the James Webb telescope space telescope taking photos of the universe now from 7600 light years away which is insane to even comprehend and the nerd of me is geeking out right now because some of these photos and images were so cool yeah so yeah. cool which makes me think does extra ter- extraterrestrial life exist out there, Brayden? You're very excited about the this, James Webb you? Telescope, the new Hubble. <laughs> I'm telling the, you, the new, new Hub- Hubble, the new Hubble. That's what I say. What's 7,600 light years? Mm. Echuca's like what? A couple hundred, like eight thousand light years in the past. But um, <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh no, I'm kidding. We love our country towns. <laughs> we keep um, saying <laughs> shit about people and then saying we know we love them. <laughs> That's got to correct it, you know. <laughs> but I think. There has to. I don't even think it's a question anymore about extraterrestrial life. Um, Really getting deep on the pod here. Extra ET, ET, aliens. Mm. I they have to exist, right? The like even like the governments come out and opened up all the files to be like all the UFOs. They were all UFOs. Like we don't know what they are, but Mm. they existed. All the photos and videos, they're real. Here's like they've like released all the photos and videos to be like. I don't know. If you know what they are, tell <laughs> us. Tell us, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're trying to figure it out. But yeah, I saw the picture. So it was like all these stars and galaxies. I don't know. You're, you're yeah, the yeah. And it's, um, and they like zoomed out and zoomed out mm. and zoomed out. And it's like, that was like a pixel within the picture that was. Like yeah. millimeter by millimeter. That and stuff like freaks me all out. The way. Like, it's just insane. Like to that think. stuff freaks me out. Keep me, keep me. Closed. That's why I, I missed lockdown. <laughs> like, you missed lockdown. My um, I'm sitting here talking about whether other extraterrestrial life. And you're like, I don't want to leave the household. Yeah, much less uh, think about that. Well, we're just little insignificant specks on a rock floating through the the universe. That's, That's what like, makes life so interesting. Just so you're so insignificant, you might as well do something cool in life. You know, yeah, but do go with this. You, yeah, you probably have. You dick. <laughs> you dick. Come on, man. I think ET is definitely out there. There's extraterrestrial life, no doubt. Whether it looks like us, I'm not really sure. But whether it looks it like ET, me... the movie. Oh, dude, great movie. This by the guy way. with the finger. Dude, love ET. What do you reckon? Um, I don't think extraterrestrial look like. life looks like. Is it like a little organism, a plant, a little grub thing? Or that's what I think it is more than anything. I think it's more of just like there's a life form that has the same composition to make up like a living thing out there somewhere in the universe. Well, that's lame. Statistically, there has to be. Maybe they can, um, what, there's extra lettuce out there so we can oh, get it dude, for, come on. for KFC or something. You're still mad that K- the KFC has turned it into cabbage, haven't <laughs> we you? We got the cabbage. <laughs> no, it, I don't know. I don't know. It's not a, as long as it's not as exciting as us. Except for they've been here in their spaceships. Yeah, I don't know. I'm... Just saying, man, there's a lot of questions. I don't know. That thing, those rocks out in England, I'm not really too sure. I've got to figure that one out. <laughs> what Easter the- Island, got to figure that one out. There's a lot of question marks on this earth. We'll get to the bottom of some of these questions. Speaking of question marks of uh, things here on earth, now I want to ask you this because we saw a video this week and it was absurd, this video. Electric scooters. Now, this was <laughs> wild, man. Like, I don't even know how to describe this. I can't put this into probably like audio form. Like, you really have to actually visually see this. Because, you know, everyone knows the scooters that Melbourne's recently got them. Brisbane's had them for a while. I'm sure Sydney has them now. And they're supposed to be ridden on the street. And I want to let everyone know, if you get on one of those things, ride it on the bike path. Do not ride it on the sidewalk because this is what happens. (laughs) There's a lady coming out of a nail salon, I want to say. Not really looking. And this is where you differ in the opinion, I feel like. But not really looking. And then the scooter, which probably goes like 20, 30 Ks an hour, maybe. Zooming by. On the, on the side path, right? On the sidewalk. Lady doesn't see it coming. Older lady, just bang. I'm telling you, she 
absolutely gets run over by this thing. And I was like, and I think she was injured. Like, and you know, a heart felt going out well, to her. I hope she's okay. Not but I'm telling you, the visual of it was insane. And it makes me think, are we okay with scooters? <laughs> like, are we sure we want to do this? I have an alternate opinion. Please tell me how hitting an old lady with a scooter is <laughs> is not is, is okay, right? For me, yeah. Guy shouldn't have been on the footpath. That's a given. 100%. Yeah. I'll give you that for sure. Head on a swivel, lady. Get, right. Be looking. You, it's illegal to be on the footpath. You shouldn't have to look. Help us help you. Like, have a look left, right. You learn that as a kid. Did he ding? Did he do the ding? Maybe oh, maybe oh, that's where it went he, wrong. He, maybe he, he needed to do the ding. Right maybe he goes a ding, ding before he, he got He didn't have a helmet on, so it's reckless for him to be he riding out on the illegal. road. Yeah. So yeah. you agree with me? The whole thing was ridiculous. I, I think you should, because I, otherwise this podcast might get sued. <laughs> she, she might have been looking at her phone. Oh, That's not, I'm just saying. Is that a hot take, Brayden? Might have been. Might I be didn't say who she is. Don't call me. All right. Well, last one I got for me, and then we're going to go into your news stories, because I know you love your little wacky things. But <laughs> uh, I recently read this. Now, Melbourne is number 21 on the commonly mispronounced places of the world. And I, like, as an American coming here and... There's so many people who are like, oh, how's Melbourne or Melbourne? And they're like, there's just a million different ways to pronounce it, I feel like. And you even, say it wrong. You say oh, it wrong. Oh, come on. Melbourne? <laughs> <laughs> no, just That was you trying. No, but that's was what it, it no, was. was it? You say Melbourne. Yeah. But it's not. How do you it, say it, right? Correct me. Melbourne. Melbourne. It's like two you guys. You just said the same thing. It's two guys. It's Mel and Ben. And they, oh, it's Mel and Ben, not Mel and Burn. Yeah. Yeah, Melbourne. Maybe this is how we should say it. We should, we should start this. It's Melbourne. But you say Melbourne. Burn. Yeah. Burn. Melbourne. That's better. All right. We're jumping into the news stories. We love the news stories. Yes. This is this is some of the people's favorite parts of the podcast. Okay. Well, I feel like you've got, I don't know where you find these things. I don't know what hole, rabbit hole you go down to find these like news stories, buddy. But audience, big fans of these. Because well, you, you just never know what you're going to get. Sailfish <laughs> leaps out of water and injures woman off Florida coast. Hmm. A seven-year-old woman was stabbed by the bill. 70 years old. Yeah. Stabbed by the bill of a hundred-pound sailfish that leapt out of the water and attacked her as her companions tried to reel it in off the Florida coast. Jeez, wait, so seven she, years old trying to bring in a sailfish is yeah, a pretty solid effort. She's just a byproduct, a bystander. She's she, wrong place, most, wrong time. Dude, Florida just produces the goods. No matter what, there's always an accident in Florida. Uh, but the unfortunate part was the sailfish stabbed her in the groin area. Uh, so the oh, no. companions had to put this pressure. Is this is where it goes weird. Got it. Yeah, I was wondering, I was like, this is a pretty ordinary news story, bro. And I was ordinary. like, where does it get on? Yeah, so the companions had to apply pressure to the, the seven-year-old lady's Gosh. groin to get her, get her to safety. I wouldn't be volunteering for that one. I, no. I'll drive the boat back. <laughs> Mace, Honestly, you get on the groin. and um, I feel like it's like whenever someone stings someone with a jellyfish and everyone's got to pee yeah. on it. <laughs> it's like, who, who raises their hand for that job? Well, no, you know, if I had to pee on someone, yeah, I'm, I'm, that I can do. I can pee all over my mates. <laughs> okay, so that's a quote that we're going to put out the atmosphere. <laughs> okay, Brayden. I'd do it for free. No, <laughs> moving on. Oh, no. <laughs> this is, I think this is my favorite one. <laughs> We've ever had. Man who hasn't stopped farting for five years sues food stall for 200 grand over ham roll. Sues the food stall? Yeah. So a dad is suing a food stall for 200,000 pounds as oh, he okay. claims he hasn't stopped farting since eating a ham sandwich five years ago. I think it's time to go see a doctor, mate. I don't think it's time to be suing people. He bought the sandwich back in December 2017 mm. during a visit to the Birmingham Christmas market with his wife and kids. His lawyer told the high court that he suffered from stomach cramps, fever, vomiting, and diarrhea within hours after eating it. We've all been there. And those are the worst times. Getting a colonoscopy is the worst experience you'll ever have with something like that. He claims to have been bedridden for five weeks with salmonella. Five weeks? Yeah. So five weeks bedridden so for food poisoning. You asked all these questions and okay, here- Now I'm interested. This is a bit answers. of a question mark coming into it, but now I'm, you've reeled me in, Brayden. You've really reeled me in. The lawyers added that he has had regular and uncontrollable flatulence ever since, embarrassing him in public and even waking him up at night. So he can't sleep. Luckily, he's married with kids already, so he doesn't need to impress anyone. <laughs> but it's going to trial. So it's getting serious. We're going to 
We're going to cover Bre- this story. Brexit and flatulence. Top things going on in England. Uh, <laughs> Commonwealth Games. Third thing coming up. <laughs> That'll be good. <laughs> now, this one really spoke to me in a sad mm, way. Okay. Woman sues man for $10,000. 10 Gs. After a bad date. Unloads on judge during hearing. Was it like a tender swindler type <laughs> scenario? Or are we talking? We're at Michigan. Michigan. Oh, we've gone north in the US. A Michigan woman has had her lawsuit transferred out of court after she snapped at a judge for questioning her knowledge of the law when she decided to sue a man for taking her out on a bad date. So the lady questioned the judge for how how much she knew of the law and then decided to... Can you do that? Can you just jump from one court to another and be like, no, I don't like you. Next judge. He essentially pushed her onto someone else because her name is... Quashante. Oh my gosh. She filed. Quashante. It's just a type of croissant. <laughs> she filed a lawsuit against Richard Jordan in 2020, accusing him of intentionally inflicting emotional distress. Huge. The legal docs allege that Richard intentionally hurt her feelings when he did not show for their date, and it was her mother's birthday, and unfortunately, her mother had passed away recently. So a bit of a dick move from Richard, yes. Also, just don't organize a date on that day if you're not going to have a good time. That I did not think of. That's, <laughs> that's come on, Quashante. Quashante, Quashante. Uh, but yeah, so but she's she's trying to get 10 grand for it 10 for, as a result of the distress. Brayden, I have to ask you this because I, I said on the last one, we're going to ask you this question because you recently have gone on a date. Yeah. How did it go? Well, and are you seeing them again? Great start, great start. <laughs> <laughs> I said, no. I so don't run away. Yeah, co- short answer, no, I will not. Okay. Oh, gosh. What'd you do? It, uh, What'd you do, Brayden? It wasn't over- It was a short, short form. Short it, wa- form. it wasn't overly that interesting. I wanted it- Okay, where'd you go? So we went to, I'll say a wine bar. We went to okay, a wine yep. bar. Um, Good met, start. Yeah, met there and- well, it was one of them ones, it's only table service. So yeah, I okay. sat down, started chatting, would like a liqueur. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. things up. I yeah. would like to wet my whistle to get the conversation started. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah. I was quite parched. Yeah. But nothing. My boy didn't come over. So like I'm, we're both trying to listen, but we're like, both like my head was on a swivel trying to look for the mate to give me a beer. Oh no. You're doing the classic, like someone walks by trying to make oh. eye contact. Oh, yeah, oh, over here, like mate. one finger up. Like, oh yeah. He did me dirty because no one came over. We didn't have a drink for like 10, 15 in. Oh, so you really just, uh, what do you do? How's nothing. It going? So it's like, like, yeah, just trying to start conversation with nothing going on. But so we got through it and yeah, just. Didn't- that, there was nothing there. There wasn't didn't a spark. spark. There was wasn't nothing. a spark, no nothing. Uh, yeah. So that oh. was a bit of a fizzer. I, <laughs> I'll qu- quickly touch on my, I had another a follow-up. Did you have that, a second one? Yeah. So I- Oh, it's a different girl. I said punches Huge. in bunches. I like oh try to- Oh my gosh, you're on hinge. Try to get a couple out in a row and then I just go back into my cave for a few months. After. Yeah, just edit podcast for a living. <laughs> yeah, just sadness. <laughs> <laughs> and um, yeah, so this date was pulled forward from Sunday to Saturday. Real huge. She was excited. She was excited. Real impromptu. Like I was in my head. I was like, just get out there and get go out for there. It. You know, Open you've been yourself. Stuck in your up. house for two years. Why not get out on the dating scene? Be vulnerable. Let yourself <laughs> just be vulnerable. Get out there. So I was like, yeah, we'll come meet you. But she was like, oh, but I've got a friend. Oh. So I took my housemate, mm-hmm. and um, that hurt. Because we went out and we were having a couple of drinks and it was like, I felt like I kind of rolled him under the bus because my housemate was putting some party pies in the oven. Oh my God. He was settling in, cracked a couple of tins. He was ready to have a night watching the footy eating some party pies. And um, <laughs> I had to co- coax him out to come on this date. Um, so I felt like I had pressure to like perform for his date and my yeah, date. Yeah, you're entertaining too for the person. So I had one. the peripherals and every time they stopped talking, I'd jump in and like mm. try to like have a have a question or something to. So I was on two dates You're at on the two same dates. time. But it's, it's it's it makes a girl com- like comforting to know that someone else is there with her to like ease the awkwardness. Yeah, feel like yeah. Oh, so that kind of went down like that. That was I don't know. Did that, it go well? Did you have you texted her since? Have you gone nah. on another date since? No. Nah. Well, <laughs> to be this. All is, right. So the update is oh, the update's not great. It's this is essentially what we're getting at. It's worse than you think. Oh, no. I don't think I haven't told you this part. Oh. Um, what did you do? So I, I flicked off a text and was like, oh, nice meeting you and stuff. Yeah. yeah. I, didn't, I didn't know if I was keen, but I just put it out there. 
and then went on to Hinge and she'd unfollowed me from Hinge. Unmatched so you? Unmatched me from Hinge. So. Oh my gosh. Not a good sign. <laughs> Can I tell this as a side story, actually? I know, like, we're going to close that dating life bit up because I, I don't want to embarrass you too much on this. But I will say this, and this is a great story I haven't actually told because we've talked about that and they're like unmatching with people and stuff, right? So I won't say who it was, but recently we drafted someone to the club, right? And um, this is like totally different from dating life, but recently we drafted someone from the club and like maybe three, four months later, you know, we're all training and like something comes up and he like sends me a message and he's like, hey, this is hilarious or whatever it is. And then like, I look at it and I had not really like ever messaged them before on socials on Insta. And then like above that is like four messages I didn't know existed. And apparently this kid was a Collingwood fan before he got drafted. Oh, so he yeah. sent me like four messages as like a 16 or 17 year old or whatever. And he's like, you're the goat, Coxie. Oh, I effing love you, man. Like you're so sick. Good. You're so cool. Man. All this, I was like, <laughs> this is so awkward for him now. And then as he like sent me that, because we're kind of live looking at the same screen, right? So him on one side, oh, I'm on no. the other. And I'm looking at it. And then all of a sudden I start seeing like all of a sudden disappears all of a sudden disappears he's <laughs> del- he's, he's live deleting the messages he had previously oh, sent no. and i just sent him a text back i was like don't worry about i've already seen him <laughs> the next day he's just like looking at me as oh. he walks into training which is a dog with his tail between his legs and i'm just pissing myself laughing i won't say who it was but uh the person that's out there he, he i think he listens to the show so he's gonna be quite embarrassed come tomorrow well, he, he would he's a big fan Man. Oh, he's, yeah. And now he's like, he's quite an integral part of our team now. So it's kind of quite funny that well, he was a, a massive Congo fan growing up. At least it wasn't the opposite. At least it wasn't like, Coxie, you flog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's probably been those. But I'm sure once they got drafted, they probably deleted those. Was smart yeah. enough to do that. Oh, man, that's brutal. That's a good one. Um, well, we will segment that into your favorite part of this whole show. The now, you've chat. been, everyone's probably been waiting for this. Obviously, the weekend was kind of crazy. There was... I went on the siren. This is a buzzer beater of my world. Um, and just a crazy, crazy experience in the MCG. 70-something thousand. Um, kick after the siren. Obviously, you can recap that all you want, Brayden. But this is going to be your segment to ask me whatever you want for the day. First of all, you guys suck. I'm sick of the, <laughs> the close games. <laughs> you like challenged us weeks ago. And I feel like we've lived up to that challenge. What? I didn't think it could get closer. But you can't, okay, you can't now get closer, I feel like. Uh, you won by four points. <laughs> <laughs> Go after the siren for one point win? <laughs> There's room to move. No, so talk us through it. This is what I want to get. So where were you? Uh, the, so obviously, uh, Harrison Jones misses. That looks all over. I'll, yeah. I'll rewind a little bit further. It looks all over. He kicks that game over. So Jeremy Howe gets it running out of defense. I was like fine with that. He's like taking the game on. You guys fought yeah. back into it. He slips over holding the ball. In my mind, I'm like, game over. But mm. got to commend him for like, never say die. Just yeah. have a go. Wasn't going to die wondering. But he misses. Where were you? And and how did you see it unfold? I was I was on the bench. So like this is the worst place to be because you have no control over anything that's happening. You're literally you might as well be in the stands because like anything that's going on, you're just purely a spectator at this point. So yeah, it's it goes from hits the post and we're all going oh still a chance because we we can see the time left on the clock on the bench right. So we knew there was like a minute thirty whatever, and um, so he misses it and there's probably about a minute left at that point and then it goes from Pendles to Darcy, Darcy plays on runs kicks to Trent Bianco. And like at that point, I'm like even with Trent, like Trent's right next to me. Yeah, kinda. you're close. So I've got like a towel for a sweat towel. And I'm like, I've brought it back to my college days of being like a broke college kid, you know, who like was sucked at basketball. I was just a cheer squad on the side. I was like, go Trent, go, go Trent. I was like, just, I was like a man, like placing a million dollar bet on a horse. I was like, let's go, baby, let's go, let's go. Run as far as you can. And he just takes off and like, Wild sees a 2v1, a 2v1 to Jamie Elliott yeah. and just slots it in the perfect, like, couldn't have been a better kick, right into the chest. Jamie nudges the guy under, catches it. And um, we, at that point, everyone looks back to the clock, you know, and it's literally dead on 30 seconds. So who's who's around you? Uh, Braden Maynard? Rosie, who's he, he injured, but injured. like, probably celebrated harder than anyone. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> So you're all just there as just a cheer squad. And you got a pretty good view of it, right? You're, oh, you're right in the middle you. of the ground, like on like the interchange. Like we everyone was off the bench. Like everyone was like at the substitute line, like just ready to go. Um And Jamie, he's a good kick. So did yeah. you 
you think he's going to kick it. You don't know what's going to happen. What's it's tough. It's forty five out at an angle. Like could not have been a, like a horror kick. I feel like, and there's always a chance. Like Jamie's one of our best goal kickers. So once he marked it, we're just like, this is nuts. Like this is crazy. And like we knew because there's thirty seconds left, he's going to run the whole clock out. So we knew like as he was going to be like starting his run up, the siren would go. Did you know that he knew? I don't think he knew. Yeah, because it's like I talked to him. He said he was so in the zone he didn't even hear the siren, which it, I love. All it so would take cool. for him to come off his line to have on his approach, and it's play on game over. Well, he's talked about it. And he's like, oh, the only thing that was going through his head was like what our coach Craig McCray was saying. He's like hips, like gotta keep your hips to the goal. <laughs> <laughs> it's like stuff like that, you know. We're gonna like in such a moment, you know, like he doesn't hear the crowd, doesn't hear the siren, just like so in the zone of like making sure he gets like the very small, meticulous things right to hit the kick. And um, yeah, it was, it was wild, man. The kick goes and it like obviously goes to the post and just like just pandemonium comes across the MCG. And the four of us or the five of us with Brayden just like sprint to him and just absolutely dogpile him and like jump on his head and stuff. And like everyone's going nuts in the crowd. And I just loved his celebration was like Damian Lillard, like just yeah. not even like, you Nothing. know, like beating his chest or anything. He's just like. Give it to me. Give me all the freaking love you can, like to the to the uh, to the audience. And he's just a cool cat under pressure, man. And that was so f- from my fan experience in my lounge room at home. The whole time, the shitty furniture. <laughs> I was like, so I was like, oh, game's over pretty early. Whatever. Like had a good run. Yeah. Had had a bunch of wins in a row. Pretty good. So you're kind of like lying to yourself <laughs> that a loss to Essendon isn't like the shittest thing on the planet. And then. You start to come back. You start to mm. creep in. Then I start going, well, you've won a few in these like late stages. So the confidence yep. is kind of there. And then Carmichael. Dude, that man. Oh, not what? enough talked about him. So Braden Maynard, like crazy smother. And like yeah. he's, he's that's his bread and butter. But comes off injured. Carmichael comes on, takes two marks and just slots <laughs> Two crazy set shots, like clutch. Yeah, I'm sitting like sipping my coffee, going like, "Mate, you don't have to kick it. Like this oh. isn't on your shoulders. You're just a kid." Slots it, slots the next one. It's just like, I don't know where you find them. All, <laughs> all this clutch stuff coming up. The, everything was so good, but so by this point, I'm I'm not a nuffy. I put you myself are down. Don't I'm even. Not don't even. So I saw you today. You're like, oh, the game, the game. I'm like uncontrollably shaking. I've got like all this adrenaline in my body and then he, Jamie kicks it and my head just, uh, my thoughts left my body and I just, no one was around. I just screamed at my TV, not anything, not yay or anything. I just went, ah! <laughs> I was like, what, what the, what just happened? What human reaction was? But then like, I'm freaking out the world's freaking out the stadium's freaking out all the players are freaking out and then jamie's just dead, dead cold just calm like just yeah. a killer ice in the veins absolute killer oh this going out everyone's jumping on him and he's still, he's still just face. like stone face i loved it, oh, it was so, so good. good but so everyone's yeah just going ballistic but like the ramifications of that was that the craziest s- celebration moment that you've been a part of yeah, probably like oh, that's the closest game I've ever been a part of. I've never done a kick after the siren. Like mm. that was crazy to me. Like I've never had the anxiety of that. And like it was it was kind of remind me of somewhat of like twenty eighteen grand final of like McGovern yeah. to the wing, wing to um, yeah, and like <laughs> bring it blocked and they take a mark and then they like Dom she kicks goal. It was kind of like remind me of that the way it went from like back yeah. half back to the forward half, and I was like far out. And yeah. then for Jamie, I take the mark, and then like obviously there's like the history between the two clubs and like seventy yeah. something thousand fans. Even though it wasn't like a like, you know a finals game, like it was. There's a lot of like emotion in this thing, and um, yeah, it was just an absolute tables turn from like us going up early, then going down, and then like finding our way back in the fourth to like literally win it at the last second was insanity. Like I've never experienced anything like that. And like talking to the boys after, they're like, that might be the like the best thing I'll ever experience in my life. Yeah. I, Pendles has been playing for like decades, oh. <laughs> hundreds of years. And he was like, it's probably the best experience that he's been through. And like he played premiership and stuff. So, yeah. so that's pretty crazy. So that kind of put you into the top four, which is also mm. insane. And clubs have fallen over all over the place. And 
Yeah, it's it's an insane year. There was another goal that came out of the game, which was Josh Dacos's goal. And he actually, oh, yeah. funnily enough, he also said that he had fly in his head when he did that because fly haunts us. he was just like, <laughs> I have to kick this goal because fly was in his head going like, we take the ball out of bounds. Yes. And he kept it in once and then, and then kept twice. it in past the second guy. And he's like, shit, I have to kick this. <laughs> if I don't, I'm going to get in so much shit. I was right in front of him and I was like, I thought he was going to take it out. You know, he was like, there's like two players coming up to him. I was like, oh, yeah, like you kind of like jog back to get in your position. And then like, I see him like tapping. I was like, oh, shit. I was like, <laughs> I was like starting running forward. I was like, and then he like about to do it again. I was like, oh, okay, maybe not. And then he like taps it back in. It's like, oh, he's keep going. Okay. So I like, keep lengthening, keep lengthening. The second then, tap was insane. It, oh, made it, was the, like a, it was like a punch. Like, it, it made like the goal look elementary. Like the goal was just the easy yeah, he part. burned me on the goal. <laughs> I was fuming. I was <laughs> like, just if he inside. doesn't kick this, I'm going to absolutely tear him to shreds here. Yeah. Well, you're seeing a day cost in the uh, pocket no, and it's like no, pass it to Mason. Apparently his dad used to play. <laughs> um, no, both those kids have been absolutely outstanding. I, I love Josh because Josh doesn't get as much credit because Nick obviously being like a first year player and yeah. like, you know, I forget the, the award he'll probably win at the end of the year, but um, what, Rising Star is it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, the brown line? Whatever. <laughs> He's not winning the brown line. I love him, but just calm down. Uh, but like Josh has like had an amazing year too and he's flown not necessarily under the radar because he has done some amazing things that've got a lot of attention but I think because of his brother he's probably been not as in the media for the things he's done as his yeah. brother which is like a crime because he's had an amazing year. Yeah, absolutely. And he's kicked some good goals. He's done some yeah, he's done some amazing things but he's not the only guy out there doing amazing things. You got the Dacos goal, you got Jamie Elliott slotting him from the pocket after the oh, siren to win the game but as equal Equally as impressive <laughs> was Mason Cox's big hanger. Oh, 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 the sit. The sit. <laughs> the it was sit. up, pull the dining room chair out and just up he goes. The photo looked a lot better, I feel like, in the video. <laughs> I don't actually know if you got higher. <laughs> I don't really think I did. I think you just took brought your legs right up. Yeah. Yeah. But, um, but how was it? Are you you coming? Did you? How's the oxygen I levels my back up coming there? down? Just yeah. laying on the ground. Um, no, it was good. I think it was funny to me because like there was like Phillips and um, Peter uh, were the two S boys like jumping up, and then the person who like pulled me off the ground was like Jeremy Howe, and yeah. he was like, "Bro, that was a huge screamer," and I was like. Dude, if Jeremy Howe thinks that's a huge career, must have looked pretty damn good. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's good. You take I that. I looked back at the video. I was like, ah, that's probably overreaction a bit, but no, I appreciate it, you Jeremy. Thanks for popping it. me up. Yeah, well, I mean, he'd know. And there was one more thing that you had a front row seat mm. to, and you may have tweeted about it. I don't even know. I don't, yeah, I don't look at Twitter. freaking sick of it. But uh, there's a young boy that plays for you, 19-year-old Jack Ginevan. We've mentioned him a couple of times on the mm. podcast. He he pops up every now and then, but he had his head absolutely ripped off his shoulders. You'd think we were like playing WWE or something. Like it was obnoxious. It was, like, I literally like put him in a headlock in the after I saw it too. Khabib Namagamadoff. <laughs> he um got Conor McGregor in the exact same thing. Made him tap out. He got him in a rear naked choke, mate. What are we doing with these rules? The constant change-ups. We're not going to go too hard. But he had his head ripped off. We got to look after this 19-year-old kid just trying to get a kick. It is absurd. Like, insane. I, I, I don't know. Like, any, like I, just, I just don't know how to make it, like, more clear that this is just not a good look. Like, in what world? And I understand, like, people will say, oh, he's dropping his knees or he's lifting his arm, whatever it is. It's like, to me, it doesn't matter. Like, you hit someone in the head. Like, if the AFL is going to come out and say they want to protect players from getting concussed and getting head high knocks, like, then you say that that's a like, free kick. You don't say the opposite. And I understand that. Like, you don't want players to drop their knees and, like, lift their arm and all that. But at the end of the day, like, you need to protect your employees. Like, it is, to me, it's like a health and safety thing. More gray areas get introduced into the game on on the reg. So yeah, I, if people, even if people wanted to sit back and say the first part of the action where he raised his arm or whatever was, was fair game play on the second part was definitely not. Well, I'll just hope to be honest that it doesn't take someone getting injured before we actually fix this thing. And um, yeah, that's all I'm going to say. It's, it's frustrating. I think everyone knows that I'm not a big fan of the whole experience of what's going on, but um, yeah, it is what it is. At least Guinea, He's got a sense of humor and he, yeah. he's done this a few times, but he, he changed his profile picture to Redmond's got him in like no, a full really? blown headlock, like a bulldog <laughs> headlock. His head's like squeezing like a grape. Um, so yeah, he's, 
He's a resilient kid. He he's I I don't don't know how I would have reacted as a nineteen year old. Like, oh, as a nineteen year old man, I don't think I would have reacted the way he has. He's he's handled very well and lot very well, and it's a credit to him. It's not an easy thing to do to have all the eyes of Melbourne on you and um, yeah, be the front page of the paper and everything else every week for something that yeah happens. That's it crazy, it hey! Like, and I can't even actually remember another kid that like burst onto the scene and has got this much attention. I love it. I love everything oh, about it. We've said it multiple times this part. Oh, big Guinea fans. He's so big good. Guinea fans. Um, but that is that is the catch up. Uh, thanks everyone for listening. It's it's a lot of topics we've gone through today, and uh, some passionate topics. Let's just say that. And the footy chat, obviously, with the week that was was uh, pretty amazing. So uh, check us out. We're going to say it again. So we got Apple Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts. Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I am smashing that now. Extended it out to seven. Oh, no, it's Spotify seven now. and seven now. Um, and Apple Podcasts. But we'll say this: interact with us. We love love the comments. We're gonna put out some question marks and everything else. So next catch up, we can get your uh, your questions answered because uh, we love a little bit of interaction between the audience and ourselves, and it gives us ideas to talk about things on the podcast. And we'll definitely give you a shout. So I'll give a shout out to one guy on your Pierre. We have Pierre oh, every yeah. every week on um, YouTube. He, he says Anya, and we say Anya back. Ah, uh, cheers, Pierre. I appreciate it, buddy. And uh, as always, thanks for listening and uh, we look forward to next week's chat we got some amazing people coming on the next month Um, some awesome people in the footy world entertainment world and all and beyond and it's going to be a big big big. month so definitely hit the subscribe button hit the bell everything else and until next time we'll chat to you soon